Yo, what's up? I'm QRS and Terry. And today we're going to talk about the future of email aliases. Now, you might be asking me, like, what is the future of email aliases and why are you going to talk about it? Well, every day I ask myself, what's the future? And I take detailed notes. These notes I then store in my WTF journal. You can go access this at everydays.wtf. And if you're watching this video right now, I'm guessing you either are a member or you found this video on YouTube and you're probably wondering what the hell is going on. So I recommend going over to everydays.wtf, checking it out. And if you ever want to become a future thinker or thinking about the future often and you want to see what I'm thinking about that day, it's a great place to go find that out. Now, with that being said, I want to talk a bit about the whole concept of phishing. Now, this post from Swift on Security is from actually 2018. So this isn't even something recent, but it feels like it could have been from today because I swear every single day I'm getting a new phishing email. And the saddest thing is you don't even know where they're coming from. In this example here, it's coming from a legitimate law firm at her company. She's like, yo, this is like supposed to be a trusted file. If we can't even trust the files that are coming from the law firms because they're getting hacked. Well, what? can we trust in 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 swift on security goes into a whole nother theory about that and thesis i'm i'm not going to touch on that here but what i want to talk about is you know phishing is not on the decline right and, and for those that don't know phishing it is 2023 i hope you would know what phishing is if you're on the internet but i'll, I'll cover that just because i know that everybody doesn't know and so for that sake phishing is when a cyber hacker or cyber criminal tries to get you to click on a malicious link by making it appear as if it's from a trusted source. Now, oftentimes when you click on that malicious link, you give that hacker or that cyber criminal access to your legitimate data or access to your computer. So they can, they can see whatever files that you have going on and they can monitor your network or they can do some nefarious activities. The reason why phishing is on the rise, well, there's, there's a lot of reasons. I, I actually don't even have to be the person to cover it. You know, Cloudflare has done a really good job, and I'll, I'll touch on a few slides from their 2023 phishing threats report that just was published, I think, a bit earlier this month. There's a lot of things that I found notable, but the two things that stand out to me is if you look at the over 1,000 organizations note, you know, what they are basically saying is that, you know, attackers poses more than 1,000 different organizations in their brand impersonation attempts. However, the, in the majority of these incidents that they've seen and re reported, the at attackers only impersonated one of the top 20 largest global brands. So, and, and, and that being said, it's like, you know, you're more likely to get a phishing email from an organization like Amazon than you are like a Nabisco cookies, which, I mean, makes sense, right? Like you would, you would actually expect for Amazon to be very buttoned up because this is what they do is their bread and butter. They know that the, the brand risk is there, but they can't control what hackers do with your information and your data. And so that's why the hackers attack there. They know that people click on links in Amazon emails. They know that Chase Bank is going to uh, send emails. And if they can pose or impose themselves into your inbox, faking a legitimate source, they're more likely to get a click. One of the other things that I thought was super fascinating in this finding, and, and I recommend anyone go read the report. I'll link to it on the Everyday's note today at everydays.wtf. Just visit there and you can look at this listing and you can actually read this report for yourself. It's very in-depth. It's good. But the thing that also stuck out to me was multi-channel phishing attempts. So what that means is most attackers are not going about this uh, from a singular instance. They're they're hitting people on multiple channels. So that means they might reach out to you on Instagram. They might reach out to you on text messages. They might reach out to you via uh, your your phone. Like they're they're going at after not just your email inbox, but they're trying to reach you on other channels to to pose their legitimacy. And you know, if you're trying to masquerade as one of these big corporate organizations, it would make a lot of sense that you do that. The hackers are smart. So one of the questions I have is, you know, how can we protect ourselves? Uh, on Sundays, I like to think about cybersecurity and, and just get deep on that, that realm, just because you can never practice enough cybersecurity, uh, especially in today's day and age, when we're always asking ourselves, what's the future and looking at all these advancements in technologies. We're not the only people looking at that. Some of the bad guys out here are also doing the same thing. 
So you just got to know that and you got to note it and you got to just pay attention to it. So with that, if you don't believe me, take a look at the, the, the results for yourself. Even Microsoft is having hackers go in and data breach their servers, get their information. And who doesn't use Microsoft? I mean, like at some point you've had to do something on Microsoft Word or use Outlook or have an Office 365 account. Like it's it's pretty hard not to use Microsoft. Heck, if you're watching this video on a Windows computer, you're using Microsoft and they have information about you. When their servers are breached, the information you gave Microsoft is also now compromised. And you might wonder, you know, well, why would anyone want my information? On the black market, man, data brokers, it's a $462 billion industry. That is, that's, that's what it's projected to be by 2031. Like, that's what it's projected to be, $462 billion. So there's a lot of money in this whole data exchange. And there's going to be a black market. And there's also going to be, you know, a for-profit market where people are saying, hey, you can buy my email list off me. We need some money, too. Like, we, we if, if, if they're not paying for the product, we've got to sell their data. And that's how we're going to make our profits so that this product can exist. And there's a lot of companies that are doing this. I mean, you can just look at the numbers for yourself. It's on the rise. So one of the things I want to talk about in this video is email aliases. Now, what exactly is an email alias? Well, let's think of it like this. An email alias is at any point when you don't want to give your actual email address to someone, you give them an email alias. Now, prior to, let's just say the last few years, this was really hard to do. Now, most cyber conscious people were always making email aliases. Heck, you might've even done it if you put a dot in your email address for Gmail or a plus in your email address for Gmail or other email providers. You've technically created an email alias. It's a derivative of your actual email. The problem with that is when you go about it that method, you're not actually hiding your actual email address. And so the hackers that go and breach these accounts, what they do is they get these databases, they look at the list of the people that are signed up, they see their emails and they see these pluses and these dots and they literally run a few scripts and they clean up the database and they basically say, okay, this is their real email. We're going to include that to sell the real email, not the alias email that we could, we could uh, identify. So if you use an iPhone, you might get a pop-up that says, hide my email. And it looks something like this. I'm actually going to play a video of it simply because for those that don't know or you might not be familiar with it, Apple made a really good video um, from their support channel. So I'm actually going to play that right now. With Hide My Email, part of your iCloud Plus subscription, you can create unique email addresses that forward to you and avoid sharing your real address. Here's a tip from Lex at Apple. In Safari on your iPhone or iPad, tap a field that's asking for your email address and then tap Hide My Email above the keyboard. Tap Use, and this email address will forward to your personal inbox. Here's how to manage your Hide My Email addresses. In Settings, tap your name and tap iCloud. Tap Hide My Email. Tap an address in the list to learn more about it or add a note. If you don't want to receive email sent to this address, tap Deactivate Email Address. And that's how to keep your email address private with Hide My Email. Thanks for the tip, Lex. That was a good video from Apple. And for the people that watched the video, they had a couple questions. This, this person here said, yo, this video needs to indicate if and how one can reply to emails sent to a temporary address without revealing one's real email address. And I was like, okay, that's a very valid point. So if you have an iPhone and you want to respond to someone that you've given a fake email to, or just, you know, you've hidden your actual email from them, uh, how would you respond without revealing your actual email? It's a good question. This is what I would do. It's called simple login. And the reason why I like simple login is it's pretty straightforward. What you do is you sign up you have a browser extension. You all know I love browser extensions. They also have a mobile app. I love those too. And what you can do is you can create email uh, aliases on the fly. So as you're browsing and signing up for accounts and just going places, signing up for newsletters, registering for 
buying flowers, movie tickets, whatever, whatever you do online, when you're shopping, you don't have to give out your main email anymore. You literally can just press a button. It will generate a email, just like the Apple hide my email for you right there on the, on the form. And then the cool thing about this is you can actually respond to those emails and it will hide your email for you. So it, it's not like the Apple method, which is only a one way. This is bi-directional and it's pretty easy. Now you might be wondering, how does this work? The reason why I trust it is because you actually can go ask yourself how it works. All of their code is online on GitHub and anyone can review it. They can see if there's malicious or bad practices being done. It's owned by the team behind ProtonMail. I'm not sure if you're familiar with them, but if you are, they're a very prestigious security company where they, they ensure people uh, can send and receive encrypted emails. And they've been doing that for uh, quite some time now. So with simple login being a tool that anyone can go and look at the code and see you know, the open source nature of it, and also knowing that this is brought to you by the team behind ProtonMail, I'm pretty confident in saying that this is the right tool. Beyond that, you know, the one question that you might have is like, why now? Why should I care about the whole concept of hiding my email or protecting my data? And there's a really good point that was, was on this uh, site called Fastmail. And what they say is they say, Using an email alias gives you agency over the amount of information the recipients of your emails have about you, and it allows for you to protect your email address from third parties. This protection element is really, really big. And here's why. We live in an era where people really don't care about you or your data or your privacy. And there's things that you should do as an individual to protect your online identity, yet you might not know how to do them. The thing that is different about now versus five years ago is this stuff is simple. It's stupid simple. I mean, Apple's built it into iOS and Safari. That should just let you know that the time is now. Apple's always late to the game. They're never early to any party. So if they're saying, hey, this is something you should care about and you aren't already doing it, you should you should be well aware and you should say, okay, like let me let me figure it out. Now, if you're on the Android side of things, you've got simple login. You're on the Apple side of things, you've got hide my email. But what you want to do is you want to start to take back some of the first party data that you're giving to advertisers, marketers, websites, e-commerce platforms. And what you want to do is you want to start to just, just say like, hey, I'm not going to give you my real email. I don't, I don't really trust you just yet. But you know, if, you're, if your site is breached or someone like takes this information and they try to send me weird emails, I now can delineate that pretty easily because I can literally see in the top of the, the email that like, this is the address I gave to Amazon.com. Why is uh, Whole Foods sending me emails on that? Oh, okay. Amazon owns Whole Foods. That makes more sense. Okay. This is the email that I gave to Microsoft. Why is GoDaddy sending me something here? That's a little fishy. There's no connection, no correlation. So maybe I should probably go either update that information that I gave GoDaddy and turn this one off because this email has been compromised. Or maybe I should go reach out to GoDaddy and say, hey, what's going on? Is this, is this actually you all or is this phishing? And that control, that information just gives you the power that you need to protect not only yourself, but those around you. Because, I mean, when you get hacked, it's just very annoying, right? Like, this is not a world where we don't use our online identities 24-7. I mean, all of the things that we do are tied to... Uh, some shape of a digital identity now. And, and because of that, you want to just take ownership and, and really be in control of that domain. With that, I'm going to leave more notes on this subject and some of the resources that I found super helpful over at everydays.wtf. Again, my WTF journal is stored here. If you have questions or thoughts about the future, this is a great place to spend some of your idle time. And I mean, I, I really go deeper on subjects like this and others. But the whole concept is like, hey, every day you want to get a little bit better. And, and that's what I do on my everyday's journal. So I would recommend checking it out over at everydays.wtf. And beyond that, I will catch you in the future.